Hi booktube, my name is Sarah and welcome to the Bookish Knitter. Happy Friday everybody. It is the 9th of April and like I said it's Friday. I am here with a Friday Reads. I have not done one of these in a long time but I decided to sit down and do one today because I have not put out any other videos for you guys this week. Um, it's been a really busy week. Um, time just kind of got away from me like legit it's one of those I can't believe it's already Friday kind of a situations. Work has been busy, not busy necessarily, but steady. So kind of a lot going on. And I know normally with Friday Reads, people talk about kind of, you know, what they've been reading this week and what they plan on reading this weekend. Whereas that's typically what I do for my weekly reads videos. So I'm not really going to go through all of that here. I just thought I would share with you my reading plans for today. Um, and I am going to get your guys help if you don't mind. I have a couple books that I want to pick up this weekend, but I don't know which one to start with. So they're both from my TBR. So I will show you guys those in a minute. Um, and I'd like you guys to pick for me which book I read next, essentially. So I thought that would be kind of fun. Um, cause you guys, if you guys didn't know, I like, I, I have my TBR, my massive TBR that I do my videos for every month. And then when I'm picking books to read next, I generally, I have, um, an app that's like a wheel and I put all the names of the books on the wheel and then I spin the wheel to pick the next book. So I do like that randomness aspect of it, but I pulled these two out and I want you guys to pick one of them. So I still get kind of that random thing. I don't know which one you guys are going to pick, but I am looking forward to both of them. So yeah, I mean, my goal is to, my goal is to read everything on my TBR every month, but let's be real. That's not necessarily going to happen. So I've got my coffee this morning again in my giant peeps mug that I love so much. <laughs> And I'm drinking my coffee and I've got my last, I'm using my last creamer from Christmas. So this is the, um, the peppermint mocha creamer that I got from International Delights. Um, but it's the last one I had because they're good until June because there's actually no dairy in them. They're lactose free. Um, so they keep a lot longer than anything typically that would be dairy. So I, I am finally opening the last one. <laughs> And I still have two in my fridge from Easter, the Cadbury ones. So those will be next. But anyway, on to the books. I'm rambling. Do you expect anything less from this channel? Probably not. So first off, the book that I literally just started this morning while I was eating my breakfast is Crown for My Royal Baby by Maisie Yates. I'm actually hoping to get this done today. It's relatively short. I think it comes in for the Kindle edition, which is, um, I'm reading it on my Kobo um, on this. Um that uh, it comes in at 224 pages. So I'm hoping to get it done today. That is my goal. So like I said, I've only just started it. I'm the first chapter in. So it is an age gap romance. I don't know how much of an age gap at this point, but when they first meet, she's only 16. And the first chapter kind of takes us through those first few years where they just kind of, he's a prince and she lives in Massachusetts. She's the daughter of a preacher. Her name is Marissa, I think, and his name is Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> and um he is a prince a playboy type prince and um then when she turns 18 they end up having a little tryst over the summer and she ends up pregnant and then she contacts the palace to tell them or to try and get in touch with him to tell him and these these men in suits show up and pay her off and it's like you can't return to your home for five years and then her dad dies so she comes back and she sees him and he's at the point I'm at now is she's just found out that he's engaged um to another woman so I'm very interested to see where this is going to go it's Maisie H she always does such a great job with these and I'm really like years ago when I first started my journey with reading Harlequins the presents line were never my favorite I don't know what it was about them that I didn't that didn't resonate with me, but the older I'm getting, the more I'm enjoying them because I'm realizing they are such a great fantasy escape. Um, this is stuff that would never, ever, ever happen in real life, right? And that's the fun. And I think back when I was younger, I was a bit more cynical and kind of more, you know, not even being a bookish snob about it, but maybe, you know, whereas, oh, well, that's ridiculous. You know, it's all about princes and this and that and the other thing. And that's just not realistic. Because if I think back to those times, I mean, I read a lot of contemporary. And I mean, this is a contemporary story, but even historicals, I like stuff that was a bit more grounded in reality, whereas these are just fun. And, you know, so I'm falling more and more and more in love with the presents line. And it just makes me happy because I have so many of them on my shelves. 
and I am looking forward to getting to all of them because like I said I am really starting to enjoy these ones so that is what I am currently reading <clears throat> in ebook format um I'm actually reading it from my library um because it, it was an e-arc that I had from Harlequin um but uh the formatting on it was wasn't the greatest so I borrowed it from my library but I actually got it as a four pack like it's got four books so this came out in September of 2020 so it's the first box set so it's right there um so yeah I am uh it's it's kind of nice to read it in this bind up so if your libraries offer that definitely check it out because then you can read like three or four books you know back to back to back if you're interested um the book I'm currently reading on audio here let me bring the cover up for you guys this is and I mentioned this in my TBR video the cover that I'm using to show you guys is actually the 20th anniversary edition cover of this book um that doesn't come out till September but I really like the cover so I'm that's the one I'm showing you guys and that's Jennifer Weiner's Good in Bed um so this is for the Book Sisters book club and this Saturday so tomorrow um, we're going to be doing a live show, just a discussion on chick lit, women's fiction. It's going to be here on my channel, so do tune into that. It, sh it will be two, uh, tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. So check that out. Me, Chloe, and Brie are going to be talking about all things chick lit, women's fiction, rom-com, what's the difference, what's the same, you know, kind of just a big discussion about it, not about this book. Then at the end of the month on Chloe's channel, we're going to be discussing the book, but I am reading it early because... What I've been noticing over the last few months is that with the Book Sisters books, I was waiting until like the last week to read them. And then I felt I was rushing and I didn't want to be rushing this one. Um, it is a 14 hour long audiobook, so it's a long audiobook, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, so essentially, it's about our main character, Canny. I have never read this before. I know this is a staple for chiclet women's fiction. And she is a heavier girl, and um, she broke up with her boyfriend. They, they very Ross and Rachel, they, they took a break, if you will. And then he starts writing an article for this magazine that seems, it's called, some, I think it's called Moxie. But to me, it's a Maxim magazine. For those of you who are familiar with that men's very adult magazine called Maxim. Um, that's what it seems like to me. And he's writing about their sex life essentially in this book and how she's a bigger girl. So now she's kind of, it, it's a very self-reflective journey, this entire book. I'm about 40% of the way through it right now. And I, like I said, I am really enjoying it. I do not know if I'm going to get it done this weekend. I'm going to try, but, um, this one is definitely on the docket for audio. So now into the two books that I want you guys to pick for me. So once I'm done the Maisie Yates, I will be picking up a physical book. Um, and I have these two that were both released in April. So these are both April releases from Harlequin. And there are two of them. Um, this one is, you can tell, is quite a bit thicker than this one. But I was trying to find books that were like the same length. But um, this one is actually large print. <laughs> So that makes a difference. Um, but the first one here, we have The Bad Boys Redemption by um, Cindy, Cindy Powell. And this is a Harlequin heartwarming novel. So there it is. I just got this one in the mail this week. Um, so this is, he is in it to win it. But what is the ultimate prize? I'm just going to read the back for you guys. Former bad boy Josh Riley is determined to become mayor of his small hometown. But that means campaigning against local sweetheart Shelby uh, Cuthbert. Gone is the shy girl from his childhood, replaced by a, fire, a fierce beauty Josh doesn't really want to battle. Then Josh learns of a scandal that can redeem his reputation, but will it mean losing his chance with the girl next door? And this is part of the Matchmakers at Work series. So yeah, so that is the first one for you guys to pick from. The other one is a historical, so these are two very different books, but which one should I read next, essentially? And this is Caught in a Cornish Scandal by Eleanor Webster. And again, I will read the back for you guys. It says, Will Saving a Stranger Start a Scandal? So they're both scandalous in a way. Um, uh, with her family facing ruin and desperate to avoid an, an arranged marriage, Lady Millie Lansdowne must work with smugglers. Millie knows smuggling isn't going to be plain sailing, but rescuing a mysterious gentleman in a storm embroils her in a thrilling family drama. Helping handsome stranger Sam recover is a risk to her plans and her emotions. He makes her feel alive, but she, uh, but she will be gambling on her family's future if she goes with her heart. So again, those are the two books. Whoops. The historical or the contemporary, you know, the heartwarming or the historical. Which one should I read next, you guys? So I would probably be starting this one tomorrow. If all goes well, I can probably have it done tomorrow. 
and be talking about that book on Sunday, like with my wrap up. So do let me know that. But anyway, guys, that is all that I have for this video today. I hope that you guys have a great Friday. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I will talk to you tomorrow for the live show and then again on Sunday for my weekly wrap up. Talk to you guys then. Bye. Mm -hmm.